This is very cool. I'm probably going to run this as a position five, but we've spoken a lot about this silencer just being so strong against counter initiation. Um, when you get a lasso and it gets dispelled, it really sucks. So when you get a lasso, you just press the press the global. It would be for the other heroes like Oracle. So he needs to be very careful with his usage of the Heavenly Grace. It's made a little bit easier by the fact that Ember Spirit does have the magic damage shield. So he, so he isn't as vulnerable, but at the same time, um, if you mess up on VP side, this Batrider is just gonna run all over you. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm really excited for this matchup, but you know, I haven't asked you the tough question where I always put you on the spot, which is, uh, who's gonna win? I'm feeling Navi. They did it before, they're gonna do it again. You see a magical storm, there is a crystallized lifestealer, I'm feeling it. Yeah, I, uh, you know, you, you might just be right. So, um, we're looking at these lanes. Uh, how, how is oh, the wait, alchemist? Wait, wait, has, come on, man. We need your prediction, too. <laughs> oh, oh I, I mean, you've gone for Navi, and you know what? I think I have to agree with you. I think they're going to be able to pressure this alchemist, because just because we talked about their ability to gank him and... I think no one isn't going to get the free game that he got in the last series that we saw. Right, so we'll see. Looks like the lane setup is actually a bit unexpected with Zayats potentially being on this top lane here. 30 seconds to battle. Also, yeah. this would mean that it's actually a Darkseer Lion duel lane, which is a little bit unexpected. Don't really see it very often. Uh, well, I, I like really what they're doing with the uh, bat here because they've they've a hundred percent identified what the point of these this Omni Knight was, and so yeah, they're just trying to avoid not a him. Bad idea. Oh, Solo, he's gone for the one point in Iron Shells. So that means he doesn't have the surge. He obviously does have the heal thanks to that Omni Knight. But Chris lies as well as Ix. The stacks they're starting to build up. It's one one one. They did here. get the room. Roger being slowed down by that sticky napalm. They need a tiny bit more. Chris lies. He's actually already put the point into the feast, so he doesn't have the open wounds. But one more hit. He's healing up. That heavenly grace to get with the sticky napalm. And Roger, he will be able to live through it. But his salve is cancelled by Soneko's arcane curse. So interesting. For now, it's gonna be a solo sand king against Ember Spirit and. I don't think Ramses is really going to enjoy this matchup. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I have to agree with you. Blizzy has gone for the early point in Sandstorm. I'm a bit surprised he doesn't go for the core stick finale. Just the value point in it against the melee hero. I mean, he's probably going to get it level 2 if he's left alone like this. But level 1 Sandstorm, it's just so inc incredibly strong. Yeah, Soneko, he's trying to keep Roger back. But Pasha is able to pull this wave and... Neko, he just really doesn't have enough to stop what Roger and Pasha want to do. Ember Spirit pausing the game only because Magical is going to miss his CS on this mid lane. Now oh, that's BM. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, he's, he's complaining of the lag. He wouldn't miss it otherwise. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right, so it looks like everything is fixed. So yeah, it looks like Solo, he has gone bottom as well as they've seen Syax successfully pulling this wave. So they have got the Omni Knight into the bat, but they're still more than happy for Blizzy versus Ramses, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. They can't really pressure this Sand King. They don't really have a lot of kill potential on him. So right now, every single lane for Navi looks pretty good. They should at least be able to farm here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I'm I'm pretty exci uh, excited to see what happens here in the mid lane. But I think Magical, he might be able to make some miracles happen. Because Alk, you know, not really that strong a laner, is he? Yeah, he really isn't. So, Magical should have pretty much a free lane. At the same time, I wouldn't expect no one to go down or anything like that. Unless something completely crazy happens. And I mean, it is CIS Dota after all. No, exactly. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking at him now. He does have a salve. Seems to be saving it for when the lane pushes out. But uh, you never know. A storm gets more and more levels as he gets more and more burst. Ooh. Especially with a spicy rune like that. He isn't going to get it, though. Oh, Roger just right in front of him. Takes the stun and takes the rune. It, we, I thought he was just going to go for the deny. 
But spending his mana wisely because he's going to get the regen. That's really unfortunate for Magical. It's going to miss two creeps as a result. Yeah, it's, uh, but uh, the fact that Roger has showed in this mid lane, it means Seneco knows he is uh, one on one with Pasha. But Pasha still having a wonderful time because Silencer without a stun, without anything, he doesn't really have kill potential against this guy. Yeah, Daxia should free farm here as well. Uh, Life Seer is very good at farming against him. Oh, interesting. What, where did, did Roger, that happen in the mid lane? But, uh, yeah, he was between the towers. Very nicely done by Roger. Oh. And it really hurts to him. To... Yeah, it's, and he's rotating oh. back in. They took an early level and stun here from the Alchemist. They have the follow up stun, but they are going to back off with the TPM from Seneco. And we uh, spoke about this before that we were just waiting for uh, these Alchemists to get one level in stun and potentially get a surprise kill with it. It doesn't look like there is a kill just yet, but Magical is so low and he doesn't have a Creo. But this is absolutely terrible for Navi. Yeah, th th even Soneko, he's sitting here. They have the stun. And now he ha doesn't have level 6, so he's just sitting in the spray. They try to pull no one under the tower, but with the Hex up, I don't think they have quite enough. Soneko, he's sitting in the acid. That right click, it's not quite enough, even with the Arcane Glaze. And Roger, he's going to get that kill. Two kills here for VP, and that's very big in this mid lane. Yep. One point in stun, two kills. Very nicely done by VP. Yeah, because... We talked about this. We talked about the possibility. And even though, you know, it does slow down your farm because obviously you want more points in the Karibu screen, more points in the assets, say, just being able to dominate the lane, it means you're going to get more CS in the long run. At the same time, looks like Ramses is actually having a surprisingly good time up against Blissey in this bottom lane. I really expected him to struggle a lot more with the Sand King. Yeah, the the pressure that we saw Zarek's bat able to apply in other games, he just hasn't been able to do it here. Because he just pops on the Heavenly Grace here in solo, runs at him, and you have that regen, as, and you're more than happy to take the trades. And solo is actually maxing Heavenly Grace. I haven't seen this very often. But it does give 28 bonus strength and some decent regen, so I guess it's not too bad of an idea. Yeah, so we're coming up to the five minute mark. Will we see any sort of big fight around these runes? Around Blizzy, he does and actually have enough mana for the stun. Pops his take, but Roger, he's here to turn it around. They're all sitting inside the flyer, but Ramses was able to get this rune. And with that Heavenly Grace, I don't think he's going to take enough damage. But sitting inside the flyer has the Purify here on solo. There's four stacks on Ramsey, and, it's, and now they got rid of with that Heavenly Grace. So they're all okay. And that's actually three runes for the side of VP. And that's huge, because the sooner it is, no one alchemist gets his radiance, the harder it's gonna be for Navi to really apply this pressure that they need to. Yeah, uh, I mean, you said previously that the hidden passive hit. Oh, but level 5, he's still not level 6. They're channeling the into stun, but do they have enough damage? Magical, with that electric vortex, is able to walk away. And Blizzy, he comes in, but he didn't seem to land the stun. No one, he's going to try and TP out. There's not quite enough damage with the burst from the remnant. Nice TP out by no one there, realizing they used all their stuns. Doesn't even pop his magic one. What a cool cat. That, that, that is just such a next level thinking. Standing next to three heroes, knowing you can TP out. It's... Absolutely amazing play there by no one. It has to be commended. At the same time, like we expected, Crystallize rushing the Midas and has it at 6 minutes. So his farming is going to accelerate as well. Yeah, I guess that's it's something... Totally... Uh, sorry, uh, I was just saying that something we don't talk about. When Pasha pull this, pulls this lane, Crystallize gets absolute free farm. And who would you rather have doing well? Your Darkseer or your Lifestealer? Probably the lifestealer there, and I wouldn't expect him to get a Radiance at close to the same timing as no one, but he should still have a very fast one if he does decide to go that route. Yeah, so Magical, he's actually retreated to the enemy jungle. I think the he might have found some stacks that were left for the Alchemist, just using this illusion room to be able to provide him with vision. Nico blocking some camps as well. I like this play. Just making sure that your uh, the enemy alchemist isn't completely gonna get out of control. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean I haven't switched over to net worth, but I still accept him. Expect him to be leading by a little bit of a margin, even though it is only a 1k lead currently for VP. 
But now it's actually crystallized because of this early Midas. Well, so uh, doing very well for the side of Navi. Obviously, they're not happy about the fact Magical seems to have honestly been uh, not forced out of lane, but he's left it for Zyax. Um, do you think the situation on this Storm Spirit is too bad after that death? Or he's going to be just fine recovering in this jungle? Yeah, he should be okay. Zyax is now taking the mid lane, so the farm is being Radiant absorbed. I'm still just a little bit surprised that Blizzy is doing so poorly. Out of all of the core heroes on this map, he's the least farm. I did it not expect that just looking at this trap. The Nako, he tried to TP away there, didn't realize that Roger had that one point into the Hex. And Pasha just able to sit next to him and run him down with the Iron Shell. Seb, indeed. <laughs> Those must be very high level battle passes, yeah. In the almost 2000, because... I, th those are some of the longest Sebs that we've heard, these qualifiers. I guess you haven't casted the Chinese ones yet, have you? No, d d well, they, they have, uh, like, the level 20,000 or something. It's crazy, the Chinese battle passes. So, uh, in this bottom lane, Blizzy, you said he's not actually got that much farm. And you are right about it, but he's not actually that far away uh, from Pasha here. Yeah, it's not too bad, and I would still expect him to get a uh, pretty fast blink dagger because he does have his levels, he's gonna make some stacks, and he's just gonna be uh, an annoying sound king like we're used to. Yeah, and I, I guess that's what we uh, we all want to see, just the annoying sound king. He is rushing this blink dagger instead of a veil. Do you, uh, do you like the blink dagger rush while we watch the Nako? Ramses with the DD as well as the Flame God. There's no getting away from that for your level 3 silencer. I really like this rotation from Ramses. Just giving some additional space to Solo here. Just making sure that he can get close to his max Heavenly Grace as well as his uh, Guardian Angel. Yet at, at the same time, it opens up the tier 1 top. So no complete free farm for Crystallize anymore. <laughs> They spent this epicenter in bottom lane, but they just weren't able to get on top of Solo. Now, finally, it looks like they are. The Purify, it's only level 2. Eventually, he should go down with that Barra Strike from Blizzy. But a bit of a wasted epicenter there. Oh, Roger, a nice double sun. Ramses, he's rotating in. Has the Flame Guard. They try to slow him down. And now Chris, I say, no, his rage is wearing off. But they're not going to pursue for that. Just looking for the kill on the captain of Na'Vi once again. Really shutting down the silencer. He's going to have a very slow level 6. So we haven't really seen too much from Magical just yet. But he has now bottled an arcane rune. So once he heals up, I feel like we can expect some plays going to come out from Na'Vi. Yeah, uh, the only Storm Spirit I feel I've seen a lot of in these qualifiers is the Kuman Storm Spirit. And one thing he really did play around was these arcane and regen runes. He knew how to push them to the very edge. Right, and Crystallize is actually opting not to go for the Radiance and going for an Armlet instead. And this is quite a risk to take, because it means that if he doesn't get the kills that he wants to, he's gonna be super far behind. So, that means that this game could be decided in like the next 10 minutes, judging by how much uh, pressure Navi can apply. Yeah. Crystallize, I really like what he did there, just using the Infest when it was off cooldown to get that easy 200 gold. From the dominated Pasha creep. He has two ways to kill all these creeps. With either his hand of Midas or the infest. So you can never send the dominator near him. Finally does use the Midas. Thank goodness. <laughs> Radiant I, I, I can just see you there with your stopwatch. You know at the end of the game you'll come back. That Midas was on cooldown for a full 30 seconds in the entire game. Crystallize. <laughs> Oh, once again, doesn't have the infest for another 50 seconds. So it looks like this Helm Dominator Creep might live for a little while. Will it though? Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Looks like it will. Never mind. Is he trying to defend oh, his bottom lane? They have a dust on top of him. They don't actually have any points in the searing chains. Magical, he's rotated here. And now he zips forward. It looks like Solo is going to be the one. Ramses is going to be able to get away pretty damn easily. And they're looking for more. He doesn't have another remnant down there on top of him. He does throw the remnant under the tower. Magical, does he want to go forward with this? He's using the arcane rune. But just, it looks like they're not going to chase under the tower. A bit afraid of a few more rotations. No one, just 800 gold away now from his Radiance. This is not the fastest one we've seen, but it's still a decent timing. 
in the top lane. They have the level 6 over him, Roger, so they might have the burst. They pop the global silence, so they're not able to get the follow-up with the stun. And Chris Slice, he's just going to rage TP away. Great play there. The level 6, I assume, that came out from the tomes. The Nako, saving the life of his carry. Very nicely done. It's so nice that Seneko has a has a lane to farm in now. Just making sure that he gets these levels up and it instantly paid off. Radiance bottom tower has Yeah, it's uh, and magical having the bottom lane to himself. They managed to push this tier one after they knew they TP it out. But Roger, he does find Seneko. Roger TPing out. I don't think Chris Lice, he has enough damage yet. If he had that armlet, he would have had that kill. Yeah, for sure. That was so close. Just one more hit. So, uh, you, you did say that he's going for this armlet instead of the Radiant. Why would you go for one over the other? What's the objective of this armlet? I feel like you generally just go for Radiant because it's very good. But if you really want to apply that early pressure and make sure that you can actually tear through heroes at this stage of the game, you just go for an armlet. And it's only 2,000 gold, but it still sets you back quite a bit farm-wise. And it doesn't really speed up your farm either. It's like either get kills or risk falling Dyer's off. Yeah, this mid lane tier one, Blizzy is sitting in the trees with his blink dagger as the level one epicenter. They don't have global silence, which is probably what they would really want. But are they still looking to defend this? Zyax, he obviously has his level six on the lasso. But all solo going to this high ground, they've got good vision. So Navi, they are set up to defend this, but it looks like they're still a bit hesitant about it. Yeah, it doesn't really look like they want to commit to it. Uh, they needed to rotate on Storm and Crystallize, but they just opted to farm the map instead. Yeah, Pasha gets an Invis rune on himself, does have the, the Centaur, giving away his location though. And I have to praise uh, Crystallize, he's only about 2,000 gold behind this Alchemist. Obviously, no one, he should start to accelerate massively now he has this Radiance, right? Yeah, for sure. But still, Crystallize is doing a pretty good job, and he does have the armlet now, so... Yep, I was expecting Radiant a play, and here we go. Attack. It's an old-school combo with, uh, with the Sand King. But it's gonna be very good against uh, pretty much anyone they can find, really. I don't think there is a single hero on this map right now that can really survive that combination. Yeah, but for this combination to work, they have to find someone. Radiant and it looks like the tower. side of AP, they're attack. actually at the other side of the map. That they bet wrong here for the side of Na'Vi. Looks like they're gonna trade two bounties for two, but at the same time, this mid tower is getting very low, although I doubt that Magical can get it before Roger arrives, or is he? <laughs> oh, he's caught up! They have the finger of death if they... Oh, it's actually on cooldown, but it doesn't really matter. They are able to get that kill with the iron shell. He stuck around for a little bit too long got chained and at that point there is not a lot you can do as a storm i mean he this did is all just playing oh oh over here the infest crystallize he has this armlet uh, they pop the entity center they have the signs and i think eventually this alchemist should go down so finding a prime kill there and navi they might even be happy with that trade they got a tower and they got the alchemist the surge forward roger has that stun and i think they're still pursuing blizzy with that blink dagger now they're on top of the lion it's, he has the lasso but it's not going to be able to purge off because he's already used that heavenly grace the finger of death on top of blizzy as well as that slight of his now solo with the omnia ultimate chris Lice, he's doing right click damage but blizzy he's right back here in this fight doing a lot of damage is he able to get on top of solo there's another stun it's affecting this life stealer ramsey he has this iron shell with the flame god chris Lice, he needs to leave doesn't have the rage for another few seconds getting very low Thyax is on top of him, and Magical, not a lot of mana, mana crystallized. They go forward onto him, he uses the Rage TP. They don't have the Slight of Fist just yet, and he is going to be able to get out by Zyax. Not as lucky, lucky with the Slight of Fist. Searing Chains, hexed up, Ramsey's needs a one more hit, and he will get the kill. This position 5 only Knight is doing so much, it just completely halted the Navi aggression. It's nice that you have an armlet, but it sucks if you can't deal physical damage. Yeah, I, I, I just didn't think about how hard Crystallize has been countered going for this pure right click build. I guess he just really needs to get something like a nullifier after his Dessa. Blizzy on the hunt. Is he going to find someone? No, unfortunately he has not. But Solo actually sticking around a bit too long. There is no barrier strike, so he is going to be A-OK. -okay. But a 7k advantage to VP off that fight and they lost their Alchemist. And it's funny, both teams actually scouted out this bottom DD rune during the fight. 
but it looks like both teams assumed the other one just got it. Yeah, so it's it... just sitting there <laughs> waiting to be picked up. I mean, uh, at this rate, it might end up expiring. So Navi, even though they were able to get that uh, good kill on the Alchemist, it now feels to me like they probably feel that they're, they're a little bit behind. Um, do they just need to make more aggressive plays every time the silence is on cooldown? I feel like they need to be very controlled about their aggression because they can kill anyone with the with the infest burrow strike. But at the same time, if you spend too much time looking for kills, the alchemist is just gonna get further and further ahead. So they just need to make sure that they don't spend too much time ganking, and if they do gank, that they instantly find what they're looking for and don't waste too much time. Yeah, uh, Blizzy, they're going around the pit. They do have the vision. They know where Roger should be, I think, thanks to that ward. Eventually, he'll show himself on it. They're playing very well. Now, they should have the vision for the whole side of VP. And Na'Vi, they're just going to get out of there. That vision being given by this ward, but not quite there to allow them to set up a good gank here. Yeah, and this kind of stuff is so dangerous because, once again, that's another 30 minutes where Crystallize is not finding and VP is... Yeah, t t t spending a full 30 minutes inside that sanking. <laughs> More like 30 seconds, but... <laughs> it feels like 30 minutes. No, I mean, that's totally right. I, whenever you're playing Lifestealer, you're just like, I want to get this gank over with, I want to use my Midas again. I, you know, hu you're, you're just uh, whoever you're invested in. Just hurry up and find them. And this is the kind of game where I would have loved to see BOTs on Sand King. It's just opening up the entire map. Instead, he has Tranquil Boats, which are nice for the region, but... I really feel like they needed that global map presence for this lifestealer. Yeah, Zyax in the trees here. Is he attack. is the one with the boots of travel, so he has made a lot of space here on this bottom lane. So maybe that's uh, why Blizzy didn't go for them. Yeah, I guess so. And the storm has a lot of global presence too, so maybe as soon as the bat rider gets his dream too, he will try to make the place with lifestealer. There are a lot of lifestealer delivery mechanisms in this game. Radiance yeah, that is one good thing about the Navi lineup. You know, they're not reliant on the Sand King. He can get inside the Storm. He can really get inside everyone other than Solo. And, uh, but no one doing very well here. Already got the Manta style. And next thing you know, he'll have that AC so the Desolator won't make uh, him hurt that much. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Even with the AC though, just a combo of an Epi as well as an Infest. It might just still take him down if there is no help close. I'll take your the magical, he has another arcane rune bottled. We saw the last one resulted in a kill. But Navi, they're, they're just not having that aggressive aggression that we might have expected from their lineup. Once again, it's hard to say if this is confidence from Navi or just them not being able to find the kills that they want. Because uh, I do feel with Crystallize's uh, build, they're, they're definitely aiming earlier than you would a Radiance Lifestealer. And that means VP, I feel even though they have the Alchemist, they might be the ones to scale harder. Oh, for sure. When you have a position 5 Omni Knight and a Darkseer, you are not worried about the late game. Especially because VP has some pretty good Aghanim Scepters as well. Yeah, I, I wasn't even cons considering the Agnes Scepters, but uh, Roger, I, I could just imagine him saying, you know, after you get uh, your Octarine Core, I'm, ne I'm first in line for those Ags. He's like, hey man, remember the time when I bought you a beer? It's time to pay back, my friend. Exactly, pay your debts. I, I came round, I ganked mid, now give me 4,200 gold. <laughs> Magical does have his Orchid finished, so... He can try to make some plays on his own, which could buy a lot of space for Navi to control this map. But again, it's quite risky. He has only 1200 HP. Yeah, but... uh Just one mistake. But talking about that Orchid, Ramsey's... At, he almost has the full gold for his Yule Scepter. He hasn't committed to it yet or shown any components, but now he's committed to it. So he has the Yule's the exact time, time of the Orchid. So it means they're not going to be able to kill him. I feel like the most important use of the Orchid is... This game is definitely going to be on the Omni Knight. Because if you don't use it on the Omni Knight, he's going to dispel it anyway. Just want to make sure that you can jump him in fights and actually reliably take him down. Okay, so it's a, a tool to pick off the backline spots. Meanwhile, Crystallize, they, they find this lion that's a, a kill in this top lane. 
Yeah, nice infest kill there. It's not exactly what you want. Oh, but BP there is defending this tower. The reveal of the Blink Dagger. They buy back the line. They pop the global signs. But Blizzy, he's probably going to tick down to the Radiance. And he does. Chasing forward over here. Crystallize teeping away with the Rage. They won't be able to stop that at all. But somewhere else, they find the Ember Spirit. Magical. He had his heals, but it was on the Kriya. So very nicely timed by Magical. Didn't even need the lasso for that one. Yeah, but Zayat. no one. He's found Zayat here in this mid lane. And the Radiance as well as that's done. This Blink Dagger here from no one. Netting the side of EP two quick kills. You know what I really hate about this game right now? Is that you can't see the Iron Shell on no one at all. Because the Radiance effect is purple too. Yeah, uh, I, I mean... Like... Yeah, people people have complained about a, a few too many particles. I know there are a few heroes like... um. Like an Earthshaker who it's very difficult to see the Iron Shell. I feel like it would be fine as long as they have the same colors. But having a purple Radiance is just so confusing. Yes. So Magical, with the reveal of his Orchid, he did manage to get a big kill. And it looks like next for him is that Lincoln Sphere. Uh, that does help with a bit of control from the line as well as the Alt Stun, I guess. But would you rather see a BKB maybe? Uh... I probably would, yeah. But at the same time, if Lion has a Hex, you're not gonna escape anyway. It's a bit greedy of an option, especially going into the late game. And I would have preferred a BKB, but it's not too bad. It helps against the uh, Alchemist jump as well. Yeah, so Crystallize, uh, we thought he might, you know, get a pretty early nullifi nullifier to deal with that Omni Light. But actually, he's just get going standard, getting that SMY next. Yeah, and I really don't like this, because um, a part of the value of an SNY is the movement speed. But when you're going to be infested when jumping someone, I don't feel like movement speed is as valuable. So I'd much prefer seeing something like a nullify, or even something crazy, crazy damage-wise like a Daedalus. Yes, but the side of VP, they are grouped up here, going for a smoke into the Roche pit. They've got decent vision here. I thought they were going into the Roche pit, but it looks like they're going around it. Then maybe Roche will be the objective afterwards. A big item here with the AC on to no one. Are they going to find Crystallize? D Rage, just TP away, and he's going to be just fine. That is not the man you want to find from the side of Na'Vi. Anyone else would have been great. But Crystallize means they're still able to contest this pit area if they want to. At the same time, Magical is sitting very deep in VP's jungle. We'll take that. I think he's really hoping one of the supports comes to no, push out this lane. To give him. Quite unlikely though. They know the storm is missing. No one is gonna be solo on the map. And I don't mean literally no one. I mean no person. <laughs> Uh, that is one of the issues with casting VP games. But VP, we said they wanted to go into the Roche pit with a kill. But they've decided to do it without a kill. The regen just being given to this alchemist. The level 4 in the Heavenly Grace. Na'Vi, they don't seem to have any idea about this. And they're clearly being seen by these wards. Oh, and I Fighting into silence though. This could be very scary for VP. Yeah, VP, it seems they are respecting the side of Na'Vi. Blizzy. He's not going to be caught, but they do actually find the silence on the back line. They have the vision for it. No one. Do they have any dust or detection for Blizzy? He stuns himself over here, but no one's right there. He should have perhaps stayed in the sandstorm, but that's two quick kills, and I think that should allow them to finish the Roshan. Yeah, because of the cut trees, they could actually see Seneco from there. So that's a huge pickle for VP, and it's going to secure the Rosh. Yeah, tier 3 bot is taking a little bit of damage, but it's not gonna go down, so Beep is gonna love this trade. Yeah, the Magical was committing to it, but Roger's here moving pretty fast. And, and I don't know if you noticed, but the Darks here, he actually put the... Oh! So I actually tries to snatch it, but he's not gonna be successful. And now, no one. They don't actually have the vision for him. He's TPing out, and he's actually gonna be okay on this Batrider. But someone who's not going to be okay is the Storm Spirit, but the Global Silence saving Magical's life once again. No one's TP to this shrine, so Magical is just going to be able to walk away. That's not the way you want to use your Global, ideally. That must really suck for Navi. Because now they can't really be aggressive at all for 110 seconds. Yeah, it's, uh, I was trying to point out when they TP'd back Roger, they surged him just as he got back, so he would be able to catch Magical if he stuck around for too long. It was a really cool. nice play. Right, he's finally gonna go for the TP. 
This is not good for my blood pressure magical. Come on. So Chris lies. Ha he is farming fairly well. He's not as far behind the Alk as you might be if you weren't having a decent game here on this live sealer. But 101, he's wanted to get more kills on himself. And uh, as you said, he, he is just building a crazy damage item in the Daedalus. Yeah, the Midas does really help with uh, staying relevant at least. He doesn't have the extreme flash Giant farming with the Radiance, but killing attack. creeps in three swipes also helps your farming speed. Yeah, it's, uh, and I'm now just looking at no one. And uh, can you see that iron shell on him? Yeah, you really can't tell at all. It's uh... oh. Francis. Oh god. Uh, it's missing kills to talk about irrelevant things. That's uh, that's not a positive look on me. Radiance top tower is under attack. While they TP back. are important. Uh, they're trying to defend this Zyx, but they're going back in on the Batrider. No one, the Finger of Death. He's probably going to tick down to the Radiance. Meanwhile, over here, Crystallize is on top of Roger. So they do lose their Batrider, but they pop the Omni Knight ulti. They're sitting in the Sandstorm over here. They pop the Hex, but they're just able to TP out. But Chris, the Sanking, they found him. So two kills over here for the side of VP. Yeah, and the moment the Guardian Angel comes out, there is just nothing that Navi can do anymore. So they instantly have to get back. And Crystallize, Crystallize nearly died as well to the concoction. So that was super risky for Navi. Yeah, and now they don't even need to stop pushing the Ember Spirit. He'll get there eventually, but they don't really need him for this push. They don't have Epicenter because the Sanking's still down. But Magical, he's just there to kill the Creep Wave, it seems. And no one with this heavenly grace is just so tanky. What do you do against Dyer's this man? Yet he has this amount of region and that's without his ultimate pot. And that's just a tier 3 for absolutely nothing for the side of VP. Yep, and now they can start taking shrines. Even though their lineup doesn't really push fast at all. They can just slowly but surely take everything down. Just because of the safety that this heavenly grace provides. Yeah, it looks like they're actually just waiting for the next creep wave that Magical Storm Spirit has been a little bit annoying cutting the waves. But, no what? He says, I'll just take the shrine while we wait for the creeps to come back. Ramses. Oh, they're on top of him, but the lasso, they don't get it out quite in time. There's no Lincoln Sphere. I'm not quite sure what the... Hold up, where was for Zyax? He didn't have vision, so he jumped slightly next to the Ramses. Yet, and they're going into the base here, right on top of Sol Soneko, and he's going to drop to the Radiance as well as the Asus Ray. Does have buyback, but no one, he's right here in the base, and that's a range barracks. They're coming back over here with Zyax, he is in first, he does have the lasso. Are they going to fight this from the side of Na'Vi? No one. They live him. They're on top of the Omni Knight. They know he's a real problem. A magical. They lost the Omni Knight. 47 seconds. They've taken out to the line. They've put their global silence. Chris Lies, they're fighting forward. Are they able to find any more? He's on top of the Dark Seer over here, but Crystallize. They have the stun coming out from Magical. It is a buyback over here from Zyx. Mag Crystallize, he really wants to be able to find Pasha, but he's not able to get it. And meanwhile, in the base, no one. He's busy, focused on objectives. The Lysia TPing back in. Do they have any control here for no one? They're trying to push you back, but he has been able to get it. Magical, he has enough damage at least to be able to burst the Aegis. They even buy back on the Sand King for this. It looks like they want to be able to kill no one tries to Magical, the Science on the back line, because Omni Knight, he brought back into this fight. No one. Is he able to pop his stun? It doesn't really matter. He's going forward on top of Magical. They don't have quite enough. Solo, he pops his ultimate, but he will probably drop to the Magical damage uh, eventually, but he's living through this. It's, uh, healing up even with a Heavenly Grace. Zyax on the back line. It looks like so Solo is going to be the one representative of the time. The side of VP to eventually drop the Arcane Curse. Picking him down. And Magical able to get that last right click. I really didn't expect Navi to commit for a fight there, but they got the perfect opening. And they almost killed the Darkseer as well, but Crystallize missed two times in a row because the Darkseer has the bloody 12% evasion talent. Gaben not having mercy upon his soul. So that fight, although it felt like Na'Vi, you know, they got a decent initiation with their buybacks, uh, killing off the Omni Knight twice in a row, they really didn't get that much more and they lost their barracks for it. So all that goes in favor of VP, does it? Yeah, I think so. They didn't really lose that much. Ramses and no one didn't have to buy back, so you don't really care about the rest. So Crystallize, in the next fight, he will have his Daedalus uh, if he wants to buy out. We'll probably wait for buyback, buy I assume.
But uh, with that little amplification of talent, damage, do you think they'll then have enough for this alchemist? I don't think you're safe for a buyback at all. I don't think it's relevant this game. You just want to make sure you have enough damage to actually kill the target you jump. So I wouldn't expect him to save up. This is kind of an all or nothing kind of game. Yeah, so uh, Blizzy has that blink tag on the yours, but it feels like we haven't really seen him progress since then. And the side of VP, they can definitely feel that they're ahead. We're going to have a quick look at the buybacks, and they know there's there's actually none on the bat, the silencer, or the sand king. So uh, I think they're just looking for any one of those pickoffs, and it will lead to a second lane of racks. And Ramses has a Lincoln Sphere now, so it's going to be a lot harder for this bat rider to find the lasso. He does have a first stuff, but still, just that extra split second could be enough. Magical, I think he tried to cut the mid wave, but it seems he did miss the creeps. And even if that happened, they do have... A... Actually, it's the dominated catapult, so it wouldn't have cut, got rid of back to protection. But now, without that zip TP able on the storm, I just don't see any reason why VP should let up their, this push. And once again, crystallized and Zayat, so just... Running around trying to find a pickup, but VP is perfectly content just being as five. But they're wasting a lot of time here. It's almost a full minute now. Like VP finally taking the shrine here. Looks like they're possibly just gonna wait for the rush. There is no reason to rush right now. And still, Zayats, as well as Crystallize, waiting in his bottom lane for someone to show up. I think that they're, they're really hoping for a they're really hoping for a solo pickoff but you know the side of VP then they're not going one by one to these lanes because they realize this is what the storm spirit as well as this bat rider lifestealer thrives upon and the moment they TP away no one just walks in that's so sad that's just life in a nutshell honestly they could try to go for Rams is here, but he does have a Lincoln. There is a four staff over on Zayak Bat. So it, he sees it, he might be able to break it, but you asked as he decides to go for it with the Firefly, the Ember Spirit, jumping back to his remnant. Yeah, I didn't ex uh, I feel like Zayats didn't expect his Firefly to break those specific trees. Yeah, so the, the side of VP, it looks like they are going to wait for the next Roshan. It is back fairly soon. And no one. He is just absolutely massive. Octarine core completed. Almost enough gold for an Agnum Scepter if that's the next item he wants. And they get all four bounty runes as well. And that just makes their net worth shoot up even more. Yep. And still no kind of nullifier on Navi. So it's going to be so rough to fight as long as Solo is in a good position. Yep. We were saying that we thought this Navi draft, they'd be able to get a lot of aggression going thanks to this Lifestealer and all the vehicles for him. But every time they seemed to go for a smoke while Crystallize was inside the Sand King, they just weren't able to find the side of VP. Maybe something lacking with Vision or just VP outplaying them. It's worth noting though that Storm Spirit does finally have his BKB. So it's going to be a lot harder to lock him down in these fights. And he, if he gets the jump, they could easily take down Solo at this time. Yeah, it's, and now all tier 2 is removed. They even pop the glyph, I, I think just because they're afraid of the Storm Spirit doing the zip to try and get rid of it. No one pops his alchemist, but he's just happy to stand there, tanking the damage from Crystallize. Crystallize, he didn't complete the full Daedalus, and no one, he's now just focusing on the barracks. That's not quite enough damage. This alchemist just so tanky, but meanwhile, on the back line, they've got the Hex, they have the Global Science, and they are going to be able to take down the Batrider. It looks like he went for the initiation. Magical with his BKB wants a Roger, but they put the Lincoln Sphere on top of him as well. Magical, this isn't the 10 second BKB, so it's lasting once. Blizzy comes in with a Barret Strike Epicenter, but it's just not enough damage. They have the Hex, the vacuum back of the wall. Magical, he has no mana remaining, and they call GG in the middle of the fight, just as they're losing their heroes. Crystallize, he hasn't died once this entire game, but does it really matter when he's not able to do anything? They just couldn't stop this alchemist. They killed him once with a gank. The, the vision 